everybody, it's Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun, host of Vancouver Island Time, and I'm here with... Andrew Plank from Royal Page. Hi, everybody. And we're the hosts of He Said, She Said, They Said, a real discussion on real estate in Victoria. So, how was your week? What are you talking about today, Jane? <laughs> well, we were going to talk about exteriors. We're going to actually just move that back two weeks. Today, we're going to have Melanie Henson talking to us about staging your home for sale um, and also redesigning if we get into that. So mm -hmm. she'll be coming to talk to us after the um, after we go over the stats. I'm sorry, my light's a little bad. It's so nice outside. It's not normally this red. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there, that's better. Yeah. Awesome. So, okay. Um, let's get so the stats are interesting. Wow. Zoom. So you've moved into your new place. You got your new office set up. Uh, I've, I've got an office set up. We're still, we've got about three months of rentals ahead of us. Uh, so my office will be downstairs at some point, but for now we've moved me upstairs uh, into the main open area. So that's, yeah, that's going to be fun for, <laughs> Yeah, for, for juggling phone calls and, and my partner and I are both really busy and often on meetings and often working from home. So anyway, we'll juggle well, That's We're the juggling. way of the world right now, right? That's the way of the world. Exactly. It's not a bad place to have an office set up. So I, I um, saw a quote today, um, which I posted. Let me just find it. And it says... I saw that. Another one of those positive affirmation kind of things. This is not the year to get everything you want. This is the year to appreciate everything you have. Yes. So what do you appreciate? Well, I appreciate having a roof over my head and I appreciate having my family and I appreciate just being able to breathe, you know? And I appreciate that we live in Canada. I love Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, realistically, despite all that everyone has going on in the world right now, we live today better than the kings and queens or the royalty of, you know, the 1500s or something like that. We have so much better lifestyle than anyone that came before us. So the little things that we complain about um, here um, in Victoria are generally, I would say, minor in the grand scheme of things. Um, we all do have issues that come up and some real horrible things happen in our lives. But um, but on the whole, we're we're doing pretty well at this day and age. I'm appreciative of uh, technology, the fact that we're able to work from home, yep. the fact that we don't have to exchange money by hand. How many times have I thought about that when I've gone to pay and I can do, you know, tap it, instead of exchanging money? I'm sure that was a big problem in the past, at past pandemics, and uh, just the. Um, all the people that I've managed to meet online and the courses I've learned so much this year, it's just been incredible. Excellent. Good for you. So, and of course my family very much. So, okay. So on to uh, yes. more exciting topics. Let's I'm do so our look forward to this every week. Woohoo. Whoops. Hold on. Let me get this. All right, so we're going to do our weekly stats here. Can you pull that up as full screen so they don't need to see us while we're talking? Uh, possibly, okay. yes. There we are. Hold on a second. All right, so we have our monthly stats for November 23rd. From the Victoria Real Estate Board. Yeah. So with one week to go, we're actually tied for last yeah. year. First yeah. Seven. Yeah. We're neck and neck, but we still, you know, unless there's no further sales for the remainder of the week of the month, then uh, for the next week, we uh, we're definitely beating that number. New listings were down though. Um, almost a hundred. So uh, that's I think we'll catch up Jane. I mean, if you think about one more week, uh, we've got time to have another hundred listings you know, considering we've had 656 in the last three weeks. Yeah. 
And active listings, though, were down 400. So typically, a lot of people tend to take their houses off the market right now mm -hmm. because we're heading into the Christmas season. However, that being said, your uh, chances of selling your home are actually higher right now, just in terms of list to sale ratio. And you can see here um, new listings, 656 and 577 sales. So you have about a 90% chance of getting your house sold if you. Um, if you sold it, hold on a if second. You your home. There's a, I you mean, with the, with the increasing restrictions and increasing numbers, um, I feel like people might be a lot more hesitant to list a home today. And, you know, they should know that we, we do our best to mitigate and, and prevent any kind of um, um, unhealthy practices during showings. And there's a lot of tools available to us through, as Jane mentioned, technology to allow for even, you know, contactless um, showings of listings uh, prior to someone really being vetted and being able to come through through and see the home. So um, what's interesting right now, Jane, I, I'm sure you're seeing the same thing is there's a lot of people out there really desperately looking for a home. So although yeah. I'm normally I would suggest to folks like let's wait until the spring market right now is um you know every time that i make a showing request um well not every time but quite often showing requests are oh no we we just got 11 offers on our pro on the property it's now sold um you know the property's under mark under contract no not available so it's uh, it's a tight market right now and so anyone thinking of selling um you can look at these numbers and say this is this is lower and part of it's because of the numbers, but we have tools available to us. Yeah, and actually, if you look at just in the last week, new listings at 179 and pending at 187, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great time to list your home. More, I have more properties are selling than, than listing. Yeah, yeah, and I have been having conversations with people, but I'm finding sellers have a bit of seller fatigue if they haven't sold and their house has been on the market a little bit. So just hang tight. It's going to sell, um, especially when the choice goes down. That's why those houses sell. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So next up is uh, Melanie Henson. So she is with Homestyle Solutions. Melanie, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you guys? Hey, Melanie. Good. Hi. So Melanie's been in uh, the homestyling community for 13 years. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So I've known her. Um, you actually bought the company off of an, another uh, stager, right? Yes. yes, that's right. So the company was already in, um, gosh, I think they've been together for about 10 years, maybe before I actually took over it. But we, we stayed together for a little while and then the other members retired. And then I have been in operation for 13 years now. So. so the first time I used staging, I have an interesting story. I had a, a town home and uh, it had a little short hallway, had a big skylight above it, and then it opened up into a living room, dining room. And every time people came into this town home, they would see this three legged, uh, um, no, it was a two legged table that was kind of propped up on the, against the wall. And they would, come in and they'd look at this two legged table and they go, wow, I can't believe it's standing. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they would walk in. And so uh, I brought uh, Homestyle Solutions in. So this was 14 years ago, just before you. Yeah. And uh, and she says, you got to take, you got to take this table out. I took the table out and people walked in the door and they're like, Oh my goodness, look at that skylight. And look, I can see right out of the house, like from here, it has a really long view. And the, the comments totally changed. So I was hooked on staging. You were sold on staging. <laughs> yeah, and it's sold. Yeah. 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 It's amazing what will distract someone in a home. And I've definitely been walking through properties with buyers and let's say the, uh, the seller was, uh, was a hunter and uh, <laughs> there's stuffed animals all over the place uh, on the walls. I have gone through homes like that and the, the buyers don't see the house anymore. 
No. They just see everything that is on the wall and everything that for better or, or worse is a distraction. And so it's important to showcase the house. So some of the, the we're going to go through some befores and afters that Melanie's done. And I really like these discussions because it shows me um, there's a little more to staging than we think. Uh, there's the mentality, there's the use of color, there's the placement, the creation of vignettes in each room, all of that. Um, but also I think people will be asking maybe about Christmas and what's happening, whether or not we should be putting up Christmas ornaments or not. Um, I know sometimes you say religious stuff shouldn't be in there, but I'm noticing everybody, uh, well, I don't know, in, in general, I'm noticing more people getting Christmas ready this earlier this year. Well, I, I think it's a different conversation, especially this year um everybody kind of needs a little bit of hope and and christmas kind of i may be doing that for a lot of people and i think if it's done hastily and you don't have a ton of i mean christmas what happens at christmas time is your house just explodes right with every type of decor every piece is covered the mantles covered the corners are all decorated um i think you can have a little bit of christmas but we really want to focus on the features of the home, whether it's the fireplace or maybe it's the vaulted uh, windows or ceilings. So you don't want to necessarily cover those up. But I think if you do a little bit of Christmas, it's not too bad. My own, my concern about though um, having photos taken and you've got Christmas in the background, if your listing goes into January or February, let's just say, you don't want it to be recognized that, oh, it's been on the market for as long as it has been. So yeah. that would be my concern. We see that too with photos that are taken in winter and there's photos of the yard full of, you know, snow. Uh, and then it's, it's springtime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, am I selling a house in Alberta? What's going on? <laughs> okay, well, let's see what we can see here. I'll just say, um, speak more to that too, though. You know, you can potentially get a second set of photos that are um, that are updated. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with if you improve the look of the place. You know, take getting a photographer in to just update at least one or two of those photos, the ones that might be really showing that datedness. Yeah. That's so, um, let's talk about this first place. So, I, uh, I mean, obviously, it's dark because the blinds are down, mm -hmm. and they have a gym in the master bedroom. Well, I mean, you know, we would like to think that we, you know, could sit and have coffee in that bay window and, and the picture shows to or the, the stage picture is of two um, chairs nicely positioned in that window. So what staging does is it creates that feeling when you walk into a room. I mean, nobody likes to look at a treadmill because it's something that we say, oh, geez, we need to get on the, the treadmill and work out in this room. But your, your master bedroom should be your oasis uh, somewhere where where you uh, retreat and anyone coming into a space wants to, you know, the, the homeowner that's buying that home is potentially that's their room that they're going to be using. So you want it to make it look luxurious and uh, the treadmill just doesn't scream to me luxurious. So opening the windows, uh, taking that machine out, just, you know, adding the lights to be on, uh, the pillows, just rearranging that room made a huge difference to that space. Yeah, yeah. It, should be, it should be noted there wasn't a lot done here. It wasn't a complete, yeah. um, you know, changing out of the guard here. It was it was some minor touches that made a huge difference. Absolutely. And we do a lot of that with our consultations. We'll go in and we'll give them these types of suggestions, like making sure what, what they should remove, how they should have it presented for the photograph, because that's really important. If somebody mm -hmm. has a checklist, um, then they at least know that they're putting their best foot forward when they get their photos taken, because uh, you really only get that one chance to make sure that um, someone's um, capturing the whole um, look of that space. You know, a photograph, you know, what 10 seconds we might look at a photograph but in that 10 seconds it's pretty important yeah i do find people go uh they go back to the floor plans and then look at the photos and try and figure out where everything is as well Absolutely. yeah and if you've already kind of shown them where things can go then in real estate we talk about highest and best use of a property and that's more like the land and how could it be used 
you know, based on zoning or whatever you, but you know, you also would be looking at that from the bedrooms in the, the, the floor plan and what's the highest and best use of this home and the location, the stuff in it, you know, mm-hmm. where does the barbecue go and where does the, you know, this little sitting area. So. Well, and I, I, I find that sometimes when I look at a, um, an empty home <clears throat> online, I can't see the relevance of that room. So where is that room compared to where the kitchen is? And if you have a flow of of furniture in there, you can kind of start to put it together. Um, But when it's empty, it it sometimes is really hard. It's like, is that a part of the kitchen? Is where's the master bedroom? Right. Yeah. Look, there's another blank wall and I can't really tell how that, what, what is this space? Exactly. Exactly. And there's a door. So in this, photo here this is again i'm using a lot of the clients things um so this is like a, a what we would call a redesign um the, their their sofas their um um puffy table <clears throat> excuse me and but we asked them we said you know maybe lightening up the color they chose this color um it, it's not showing up correctly in the, the photograph but it, you can see that it's a lighter shade it's definitely uh, brightens up the room the curtains were opened the decor is lessened or next to absolutely nothing on the mantle mm-hmm. um and just the positioning of the furniture we took this you know the the chairs off to the one side. We we added some lighter cushions and throws onto the sofa, so it didn't feel so heavy in that space. And again, like if you see the coffee table, it it just feels better with it being uh, more vertical or horizontal in this mm-hmm. picture than how it's spaced out in the first picture. Absolutely. Yeah. I like yeah, the, the you, you used the word heavy, and that's what I was feeling. Um, and the word I would have used too when I see that first photo, it really feels heavy. Heavy. Yeah. I was going to say, I like the way that you just changed the direction of the um, uh, the table there and yeah. really made it more of a like cozy area. But again, it's not, the red is what makes it heavy, I think. The red and, and the, and the red. It up with the wood, with the cover on the wood floor there. This room wasn't really that big and the furniture that they had was very large. And so it wasn't an option to remove the furniture. So we needed to lighten it up. And how should we do that? We just add a little lighter, um, you know, the floor itself is very dark. So the, the area rug is lighter. Uh, the positioning of that coffee table, I mean, it's it's kind of a bit of a, you know, a feng shui in the fact that we need to turn that coffee table because if you might be looking at that one picture going what is wrong with that room that coffee table de- that coffee table doesn't really work in that space that direction so the first one is actually more covid friendly <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an illusion it's an illusion, hmm? it's an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> i would also see you know looking at the all of the paraphernalia on top of the fireplace and just one of the things that i uh, it's an easy, it's an easy one. You know, people are intending to sell their home and move. So just telling them, look, you know, less is more, start packing the stuff now, but you don't want to move with you sell, but you can start packing and putting it into storage. I'd rather see you sacrifice. I tell people, I'd rather see you sacrifice one room uh, that's not a primary room and use it for storage of all of these things in boxes yeah. than have everything, all of the rooms feel heavy and cluttered. Well, people know that and people know that you're moving, right? So mm-hmm. having boxes in the garage using your real estate going up is is Excuse me. Go ahead. Um, so the in, in that as well though that the decor on the mantle is one of those uh, things that people start to look at more. They focus on more of the decor and the stuff than the actual space. Right. And I find that's exactly why you don't want to leave uh a resale home vacant because if you do people start looking at all the nooks and crannies when you really want them to look at it as a whole well it's exactly they start seeing the flaws so in this photograph as well this is uh, someone's uh, own furniture and the heavy um hutches on either side of the window really made that room look smaller um, by just removing those pieces and adding a bits of decor and, and some some interest on the wall plus we updated the light fixture uh made a huge difference to that space um so it, I, I i noticed the use of round uh 
round things in this picture. So you went from kind of a uh, long a tri uh, rectangular to more round um, features in the room, like the round bowl and then the round arch on the wall. And even the gin is round. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the gin. Um, well, yeah, because, you know, in spaces, when they're really square, they just, there's no soft edges. And so just adding those soft edges in your decor really make it flow nicely. We use a lot of round tables when we, when we do a dining space so that you just, there's an ease to it. Um, that was a really, really large wall. And, and to you, you need the right piece of art. And if you don't have the right size of art, what better way but to use something sculptural and round, you can kind of mix and match and, and play around with shapes more. Um, and it just, it just softens that whole room. So you don't put a runner or anything on the table to lighten it up or a tablecloth? Runner, runners and tablecloths never look straight or perfect on a photograph. Mm -hmm. and, and so sometimes they can be off balance or, you know, and, and people focus on that. Like a photograph, you see it, I, I focus on it. I will look at a picture and go, oh, geez, they just, it's a little too off on one side. This way, they're not buying your furniture and, and furniture is not going to show up that um you're not going to see all the imperfections in the furniture in a photograph necessarily. So this way it's about the room. It's not about the, the maybe the bright red tablecloth on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you further take that to, you know, I see a lot of staged homes where they've put in, um, they've actually staged it for dinner. You know, there's plates, there's, there's glass, there's cups, there's everything is there. It's like, you're ready for dinner. Uh, it's more like you're ready for Christmas dinner. Well, you know, we do we do do that um, depending on the space and the demographic. Um, mm. We'll do fun things. We don't necessarily not my preference to really set it as a formal dining dining um, table, but we might do like a, a kitchen nook just to set the the stage with like maybe cereal bowls to say, okay, here you go. Here's a nice space to, you know, have breakfast in the morning right. to give that, that impression. Um, but usually dining tables, I don't do it. I know that uh, a lot of stages do do it, but I, I don't like to do it necessarily, but we set up the bar there, as you can see, like <laughs> use the hutch to have formal, you know, nice drinks before dinner, that kind of idea. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned that one of the things you need to think about is the demographic, who is the ultimate buyer of this home? That's right. Who's gonna, you know, what kind of people are going to afford this? Who is it going to actually appeal to? So let's stage for them. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is a wreck on the left. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this was a home that had a, uh, a renter in it. And this is how it, it looked. And so we were able to, the renter actually moved out um, before they listed. And we really updated this whole space. I mean, the carpet was, you know, it was, it was terrible. It, it needed updating the whole space. But if you notice by adding these furniture pieces and some a wow factor like that burrow wood table, you don't really notice how dated that carpet is or that fireplace. Like we we kind of zhuzhed it up and made it look very impressive. Um, it's so important. I mean, it's it's a little bit like putting lipstick on something, but you can see how much the potential is. We want people to sit down on that sofa and see there was such an, an amazing view out the window. That mm. That's really what we want to do. We don't want them to sit and go, gosh, that carpet, ooh, you know, what are we going to do here? No, you sit down, you can start to recognize the potential. I like the use of the mirror on the wall as well to yeah. brighten up that side. I mirror, like the, uh, sorry. sorry. I like the use of the word zhuzhed. Zhuzhed. <laughs> Yeah, Pauline used to say that all the time. Five, yeah. But the mirrors are, I love mirrors. Mirrors are like a second window where windows should either be or can't be. And it just creates an, um, a reflection. And you got to be careful what that reflection is. So I always like to have it so, and in this picture, you can't see it. But you could, when you walk in, you could see the outside. Mm -hmm. So it was instantly made you look to the window then because you, you wanted to see what that was. I had a client who once, um, she moved into, it wasn't a huge apartment, but she liked to dance. And so she put windows up all along one wall. And when we yeah. decided to sell, 
uh, it actually was, I think, what sold the place because um, it reflected the outdoors on the other side, it made the room look twice as big. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. I personally love Going this back one. to mirrors for a sec, uh, I have an anecdote about mirrors as well. Years ago, I listed a condo and it was on Bushby Street. It was near the water, but not on the water. And it had an uh, enclosed sunroom. And you could see the ocean if you went out into the sunroom, but you couldn't see the ocean from the living room. So what we did was we actually placed a mirror in the sunroom, in, in the enclosed little sunroom, so that when you walked in, you could actually see the ocean in the reflection of this mirror. And that was the only way you could see the ocean. Wow. And, it, and, and the buyer loved it. The buyer absolutely loved the fact that, oh, now I've got an ocean view, despite the fact that, it, you know, from, from the living room, despite the fact that it really was just a, a, a reflection. Yeah. It's they work wonders. They work wonders. In in this photograph, this was a really um, very um, old home that had this great little kitchen area. And again, we didn't stage the table, but we had this brick wall and, and what a perfect spot for like a little hutch or something to, to put all your breakfast dishes on. And um, it, this, this was a, you know, we used their, 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 chairs but we didn't use the table we just added a, a lighter table but a round table again there's that roundness so that you could walk around that with ease and see what was out that window change the light fixture for a really inexpensive home depot light fixture world of difference yeah it looks amazing i love it, does. it. it looks really good melanie how often do you get called in by the seller after they've sold their home and bought a new place to... uh, quite a bit yeah <laughs> Quite a yeah. bit. We've had where where people, you know, they're like, "Wow, I, we should have done this before." I, yeah. I don't, I, you know, can you help us in our next place? And and a lot of our design clients are repeat um, customers from staging. I, I've got customers of all the way from, you know, their first home from doing a consultation to staging their home to designing their home, and and uh, others, yeah. Absolutely. If you guys, if you guys um, want to reach Melanie, uh, this is her contact information, 250-391-1924. Her email is homestyleteam at gmail.com. You can reach her at homestylesolutions.ca. So I just wanted to bring us back. I can't, when I have it on um, PowerPoint, I actually can't see what's going on. So <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so um how long in advance do people need to book you in order to reach you well we we have different services so we always like jane always um calls me in at least two weeks in advance to when you're thinking of listing because i think that that's a good opportunity for somebody to really you know get that checklist under wraps figure out what they need to do, get all the people that they need to have in, whether it's painters or cleaners, et cetera. Um, that's a good amount of time without it being too overwhelming for the client. So with our first impression consultations, I would su definitely suggest two weeks. If you're wanting to stage it, because it's a, it's a, a vacant, um, usually we go in, we can do a free estimate, we'll come in, we'll take a look, we'll give you a really good, accurate quote. And that usually takes us about, you know, a good couple of days prior to when you want to list. Now, movers have to be called and photographers. So, you know, within a week, at least of when you as the realtor is thinking of listing. But the redesigns, we can usually go in the day before the photographs and have it absolutely photo ready for your client although we cannot um, move and store things but if they are ready to go we can redesign like the next the day before the photographs because we don't want to have too much of a lull in between you don't want to mm -hmm. redesign and then have somebody walking on eggshells and sleeping on the sofa because they don't want to sleep in the bed um, but usually the day before um, you want to list it on mls yeah and i just wanted to say that part of staging is letting go emotionally of the house and it's pre-packing for where you want to move in and it's getting your getting your mindset getting the mindset of the seller together so that they're ready to sell their home yeah. 
when I when I go in, I, I really make sure that they understand that um, we're a part of this with them and we're a part of their team and a part of the real estate team to get them um, the most money and sell it as as quickly as possible. Um, it's not about how they live. It's about how to sell their property and get the best value out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, I always preface that, you know, selling your home is different than living in your home. Right. And, and you know, where where you sit and watch the television is probably 99 percent of the same amount of people would be sitting there as well. But on a photograph, it's not going to come out very well. So, you know, making sure that they are aware that it, it's it's about the, the it's not really their home anymore. It's it's something that they're selling. Right. Yeah, it's a product and they need to put on their the buyer's hat, in fact, and see it from the from the buyer's perspective and sort of let go, as Jane said, about this as their home, because if that our intention truly is to sell, they need to they need to let go of some of these things that as much as this is how they've lived and loved this home, uh, somebody else is going to do their own thing with it. Absolutely. So. And, and, you know, um, with the consultations, too, I always like to tell my realtors that we're we're not the bad guys going in and telling them, you know, like the kitty litter cannot be under the dining room table or, you know, there is there is a, you know, a nasty foot smell in in the front entrance. But we explain to them the reasons of why potential buyers would come in and and maybe that's a turn off. So they usually in the hour and a half that I'm there. Um, we, we end up being best of friends because they're so happy that they've had, um, they are putting their best foot forward and, and getting what they want out of listing their home. You would never sell your car dirty or with a bunch of, you know, McDonald's cups or bags in the bag. Why would you sell your largest investment mm -hmm. um, unclean or not um, looking its best? Yeah, great point. 100, 200% agree. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, again, if you're interested in reaching Melanie, you can call her at 250-391-1924, right? Yes, ma'am. I have her on Thank speed you dial. Guys, that was fun. Yeah, you must have that in your head. You've got that on speed dial for sure. <laughs> I do. Melanie is my secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes as part of our no listing process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for, for joining Bye. us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Melanie. Okay. This was wonderful. Great. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. 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 All right. So, um, we're going to, I figured out my uh, camera, by the way. Doesn't this look better? Yeah, that does look better. You're not so red. <laughs> my, my, not so, my lighting's gone, it's kind of changed. I think it's gotten brighter in the background or something. So, going to work on this for next week. So next week, we're going to have Yana King. She's going to be talking to us about um, how to get your home ready for accessibility. Pardon? Oh, I thought, okay, never mind. Accessibility. Excellent. Yeah, which I think is very topical, especially with our aging population and mm -hmm. people wanting to age in place. Yep. yep. And then coming up in two weeks is going to be Begum. Um, and she's going to be talking about uh, first impressions on the exterior of your home landscaping and getting your house ready for sale and how important we talked about it is that one of the top eight things that we need to focus yeah, absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us again. I'm enjoying our, uh, our talks every Monday. I'm looking forward to it. Are you? I always look forward to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> Okay, yep. and um, always so, good topics too. I'm going to keep interrupting you as you start talking. It's fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm Jake Johnson with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Mostly. If you want to reach me, I'm at 250-744-0775. And I'm Andrew Plank with Royal LePage, and I can be reached at 250-360-6106. Or um, you can see my web address at bottom here, andrewplank.com. Thank you. Okay. And you can work with Andrew or me um, if you want to come to the light side or the dark <laughs> side. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll see we're, you next we're both Monday. What? We're both independent agents. We work independently. We're not a team. We don't 
um, work together collaboratively. This is something we do uh, on a weekly basis to have a conversation as colleagues and with high respect for each other. So um, whoever you're connecting with, you call. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And actually, the whole reason why we're doing this is because I think we have um, we both care a lot about professionalism in real estate, uh, but at the same time, uh, we are completely different. Same, yeah. different. Light, dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. We'll see you next Monday at 10 a.m. Take care. Bye, everybody.